the Joe Rogan experience. What is your opinion on the benefits of fasting in that regard? Okay, fasting is a, okay. Well, let me first of all talk about fasting in relation to cancer because yes. that's important. People have certainly found that it's a good thing to do, which is somewhat counterintuitive because in the later stages of cancer, there's of course cachexia, you know, a lot of loss of muscle and so on. Uh, but earlier on, it seems that we can slow things down. I mean, cancers are greedy me metabolically. You know, they, they they consume a lot of energy. So if you're putting a lot, uh, putting, if you're minimizing how many calories you put in, then you have a chance of slowing the cancer down so that therapies may have a better chance. So that that's certainly been found. Um, let me talk about fasting more generally, though. So, for sure. In, I mean, it's been known for nearly 100 years that if you give mice or rats less food than they would like, then they live longer than they otherwise do. Uh, and this is a, certainly the most reproducible and best studied phenomenon in the whole of the biology of aging. Still, there are mysteries about how it works, but a lot of stuff has been found out. And um, many of my colleagues, including David, um, have made their careers uh, by, by making progress, in, by making, discovering insights in that area. The result of that is that we now have something that people have always recognized to be rather important, namely drugs that trick the body into thinking it's fasting when it isn't. Um, you know, these are called calorie restriction mimetics. And, um, you know, that's good. That's, that's also um, a worthwhile thing because, of course, people like eating. And so, um, you know, it's, it would be useful. Um, then there are variations on the theme. So a guy from close to here, UCLA named Volta Longo, sorry, USC named Volta Longo, has, um, has um, been really the pioneer of intermittent fasting, which is basically properly starving 100%, but only for two days a week or something like that. You know, different people have tried different schedules. And all of these things are pretty interesting in terms of being good for your health. But in terms of increasing your longevity by 30 or 40 percent, the way they do in mice and rats, no way. It turns out, and this is a prediction of evolutionary theory, but it's also been found absolutely clearly in data that different species react differently to, um, to, to starvation, to, to, fa to, to fasting, in particular that longer-lived species get less benefit from fasting than shorter-lived species. So if you do it just right in nematode worms that normally live like three weeks, then you can multiply their lifespan by a factor of five or more, right? You sure as hell can't do that with a mouse, however you do it. You can get up to maybe 50%, maybe 60% if you really, really work at it. So um, with a person, you might be able to eke out a year or two. With, yeah, that's right. With, with dogs, it's been tried. You get maybe 10%. With monkeys, you get a few percent if you're lucky. That's a bit controversial right now. Um, you know, yeah, absolutely. Why is it a bit controversial? Because there were two studies done, really long, expensive studies, obviously, because monkeys live a long time, and they got different results. Oh. And so the... Um, question is why do they get different results if you look closely at exactly how the experiments were done then it's pretty easy to see that they got different results because of different methodologies um slightly different methodologies and that the real answer is somewhere between the two so yeah mm. and with dogs you said you get 10 percent about that yeah this was done with labradors that live mm, 11 years 11 years oh but isn't that normal for a labrador that's right. What I'm, saying is, what I'm saying is they got about another year. Oh, so they got 10% okay, of 11 okay. years. Oh, I understand. I understand. Um, so fasting with human beings, you think, is it's interesting. It's something. But it's not going to mimic these biologics and what, what you believe is on the horizon. Right. And I mean, I'm not against it at all. Yes. First of all, as I say, it is generally good for health. Um, you know, you definitely see people getting sick less. You know, regular sickness, like, mm -hmm. like infections and so on. Um, people seem to stay healthier for a bit, for a fair bit longer. But in terms of really pushing out the boundaries of these age-related progressive chronic conditions, um, you know, it's maybe a year or two. <laughs>